So I grew up in a little tiny town, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. My old man was a steel worker, immigrant family from Italy. My mom was a cleaning lady, not because she wanted to be, but because um, we lost, my dad lost his job like everybody did in the 70s in the steel industry. And, you know, came back from, uh, you know, every day trying to find work. And so we all had to go work. I had to go work. I went and worked at the local country club. I was probably around 11 years old. And uh, I show up and, 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 and I said, you had to be 13, so I lied and said that I was 13 and I could work at the, by the way, that ruining my presidential aspirations, right? <laughs> Actually not, I guess. Lying is no longer a criteria. Um, hey, by the way, I don't care what side you're on, that fits. So, so it's like, whatever, right? Whatever. Um, so I, I show up and my dad would say, Keith, show up at the golf course a half an hour early. I'm like, Pop, there's no one there. <laughs> there's no one there. Right? And then he'd say, show up at the golf course. He, as soon as he started repeating himself, I knew I was lost. I called it immigrant Tourette's. He just blurt shit out and just like, whatever. You know? So I had showed up at the golf course a half an hour early and walking around bored and I would notice things, interestingly enough. I would notice how the greens were cut, which helped me read pots. I would notice where the pins were placed on a blind dog leg. That was helpful because I could tell my golfer, hey, the, the pins at the front of the green, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a nine, not an eight. Well, there was a lady who called on me to be her, um, to be her caddy. Her name was Mrs. Poland, like the country. And after the first time I caddied for her, she asked for me again, and that was a big deal because we would wait up in that caddy yard sometimes all week and only get out once. 20 bucks was a big deal. My mom was making 20 bucks a day cleaning a house all day, and if I made 20 bucks carrying bags, I was making a massive contribution to my household. It was a big deal, right? And she, then she called on me again and again. And I was getting out like three, four times a week. She was the best woman golfer. She wanted to be the best woman golfer. And she was calling on me sequentially. And then she started asking me personal questions, which made me uncomfortable. By the way, this is not some Mrs. Robinson story, so we're not going there. <laughs> Just. And she'd say things like, Keith, what do you want to do with your life? I'm like, oh, maybe go to college. And then I would stop. I wouldn't engage. And she'd ask me other questions. Hey, you know what? I want you to come home with me sometime. I want you to meet my son. I'm like, okay, thanks. And, I'm, and what I'm thinking is, I hate rich people. <laughs> they, their kids teased me at school. They were scary to me. They were them. And I was pushing them away. How many of your employees hurt you and themselves every day because they see them too frequently. You know what I'm saying? Here I was a little kid, and this woman wore me down. She's like, Keith, damn it, what do you want to do with your life? And I knew she was going to laugh, and I said, well, right, my dad says, if I want to, I, I could be president of the United States. She says, yes, you could. She said, I'd vote for you. And in about two weeks, she had the local congressman in her force, Congressman Murtha. Remember him? <laughs> um, he took me under his wing, got me an internship. I ended up getting into speech and debate, Lincoln-Douglas debate, because of his tut tut tutelage. Ended up winning the national speech and debate tournament in Lincoln-Douglas debate. Ended up going to Yale University on a scholarship. Right? Um, he was soon indicted about two months later. <laughs> Actually, do you remember? He got indicted. I was like totally disinterested in politics after that. But um, nonetheless, she changed my life. Why did she do that? Any ideas? You're right. Whatever it is, you're going to be right. Look, what's that? Look, she liked me paying it forward. All that stuff is true. But I'll tell you why she did it. I took two strokes off her golf score. Why did I take two strokes off her golf score? Because I showed up at the damn golf course a half an hour early. That's it.